Today's class is entitled The Blueprint of Blasphemous Bastards. That's today's class. That's what they are. That's what I'm going to call them. Biblically, unapologetically biblical term for them. Uh, we'll open up with uh, Esther in the Apocrypha, chapter 12, verse 6. Now, when you read about Purim, Purim takes place after the feast day had just ended. The feast that just ended was the Feast of Nicanor. All right? The Feast of Nicanor just ended. At sundown now, it is now Purim. And we're going to read about the, the ancestry of the, our mortal enemy of the book of Esther, Haman. Okay, who's reading for me? Liam? Officer Liam. Officer Liam, thank you. So the mortal enemy or the antagonist of the history of Esther was a man by the name of Haman. And Haman, and the protagonist would be Mordecai and Esther. Now, Mordecai, when you read the book of Esther, he refused to bow down to Haman because Haman was second under the king of Persia at the time. He refused to bow down to Haman, so Haman decided to say, you know what, I'm going to have the entire nation of Israel annihilated, all right? And his people, that same spirit that's in him, resides in all his people then, and resides in them all today, all right? So Esther chapter 12, verse 6 in the Apocrypha. Yes, sir. We're going to read about a little bit about his ancestry in the Apocrypha, which was removed for good reason. The rest of the chapters of the book of Esther, chapter 12 and verse 6. Good reason by our enemy, of course. Good reason for them to, to remove it regarding the history of, uh, of his kind. 12, and t 12 verse 6. Howbeit, Amon, the son of Amadatus, the Agagite, who was in great honor with the king, sought to molest Mordecai and his people because of the two eunuchs of the king. This is the rest of Esther written in Greek, so their names are in Greek. It says, Amon, son of Amadathus, in the, in the Hebrew is uh, Amadatha. And it says, the Agagite. So real quick, what is an Agagite? Real quick, you know what I want regarding um, the genealogy of Edom. Genesis 36, I think it is. Regarding the, so he was an Agagite. An Agagite. When you read um, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, when the Lord sent King Saul to kill a particular group of Edomites. And their king's name was Agag. Okay? So this guy is, is the descendant of that king, Agag. You got a want? This is Genesis chapter 36 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Ellen the Hittite, and Aholimah, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion the Hivite. Hold on a second. Let me get there with you real quick. Go ahead. I'm, I'm there. Go ahead. And... Bashemeth, Bashemeth, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nabajoth. And Na Nabajoth. Now stop there. So Nabajoth, right. Nabajoth. So the, the Nabajoth is a sister of Ishmael. Now, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, the sister of Ishmael's brother, Ishmael's, Ishmael's son. Um, the argument here is, how can Esau be the progenitor of white folks if he married dark women? That's the argument you have today. Esau cannot be the father of Esau because both his parents are black. So that doesn't make any sense. And how could he be the progenitor of white folks if his wives are black? That's the argument you hear. So your response will be, and my response to the idiot in Nigeria was, so who is the progenitor of white folks? His response to me was Japheth. I said, oh, Japheth is the progenitor of the white race. He says, yes. I said, tell me. Oh, kind and sagacious, wise fellow. What color was Japheth? He goes, you tell me. I said, no, I don't have to tell you anything because you're telling me that Japheth is the father of the white race, so you should be able to elaborate on, who the, on how he is the father of the white race when his parents were black and Japheth's wife was black. So how can Japheth be the progenitor of the white race with a black wife but Isaac can't be the progenitor of the white race or the black wife. And how can all mankind come from two black people if black folks can't produce white folks? Did not Adam and Eve produce the entire world today? Aren't they the, the father and mother of all living today? Were they not black? So uh, you got to be very mindful of idiots. Very, very mindful of them. So despite the color of Esau's wives, they came out looking like him because there was a God. You understand? I've seen numerous instances where a white man had a black wife, and them kids came looking just like him. Just like him. Fancy, 
Fancy from uh, Jamie Foxx show. Marcel Buvis, yep. Marcel, the Levi sister. Sorry, love her. Sorry. Married Esau. And the kids came out looking just like the father. And they got a black mother. So don't fall for the nonsense. Do not fall for the nonsense. There has to be a devil, and there has to be a, a pinpoint of who he is. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that red skin is a, is a clear um, designation. Y'all understand? All right. Read on. And Bashemeth, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nabajath, and Ada bare to Esau Eliphaz, yes, and right. Bashemoth bare Rehuel. Right, that's the, mark, so that's the mark of Cain, by the way. That pale red skin, that's the mark of Cain from Genesis. That's what that is. That's why it looks that way. Because that is Cain all over again. Continue. Another class. And a holy and a holy bima bear Jehush, and Jalem and Korah, these of the sons of Esau, which were born unto him in the land of Canaan. I'll jump to verse 12. Verse 12. And Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. So Amalek or the Amalekites came out of the children of Esau or Edom. And the king of the Amalekites' name was Agag. When you read 1 Samuel 15, who Saul refused to kill. So the descendants of this man, Agag, the king of Amalek, because he was the Amalekite himself, was Amon, an Edomite. Amon was an Edomite. Y'all understand? Amon, the protagonist, the antagonist of the book of Esther, was an Edomite. And his objective in the book of Esther was to have all of the Jews killed because one would not bow to him. Would not bow down to him. Y'all understand? Mordecai refused to bow to this man. It was against our laws to bow down to a man as if he's a god. Mordecai said, I'm not bowing to him. So Amon said, I'm going to kill them all because he's a mortal, because Esau has always been and his children have always been our mortal enemy. Always. From the beginning of time to the end of time. Or end of his days. Even now. You understand? Yes, sir. Go back to Esther again. This is Esther. In Apocrypha, chapter 12, verse 6. Howbeit, Amon, the son of Amaditus, the Agagite. So Amon was the descendant of Agag and Amalekite. He was an Edomite. Go ahead. Who was in great honor with the king. He was second under the king. Go ahead. Sought to molest Morde Mordecais. Sought to molest Mordecais. Mordecais is Mordecai. Right. He sought to kill Mordecai. Go ahead. And his people because of the two eunuchs of the king. Because Mordecai, you read the history, Mordecai ratted, pretty much ratted on the two guys that he, set, that he set up. Haman set up to kill the king of Persia. Mordecai ratted on them. And so he wanted Amon killed. That's, that's the backstory. story. When you read Esther in the, in the Bible, the Apocrypha gives more detail behind the scenes as to why he was so angry with Amon, with, I mean with, with Mordecai, because, Morde because Amon had a plot set up to have the Persian king killed, and Mordecai foiled that plan. So out of retaliation, he wanted the entire race of him killed. That's how evil this guy was. Now go to chapter 13, verse 3. We're going to read about his slander regarding us and how he convinced the Persian king to go along with eradicating all the Jews. All right? Yes, sir. Verse 3. Now, when I asked my counselors... I'm sorry, this is, chapter 13 is referring to... This is Xerxes himself speaking on what he was told by Haman himself. He's, he's reflecting on what Haman told him regarding um, um, killing us. Go ahead. Now, when I asked my counselors how this might be brought to pass, Haman that excelled in wisdom among us and was approved for his constant goodwill and steadfast fidelity and had the honor of the second place in the kingdom. See that he had the honor of the second place in the kingdom. He was second under the king. Go ahead. Declared unto us that in all nations. That in all, that in all nations. Go ahead. Throughout the world. Throughout the world. We were an omnipresent people. Even during this time. We were all over the known world. Go ahead. There and, was, the, uh, and the new world. Go ahead. There was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations. We had laws that, were, that made us contrary to all nations. Go ahead. And continually despised the commandments of kings. So what he's doing is this guy is doing a smear campaign. He's speaking about the, of the history of our kings that rebelled against kings that were over them. Like, uh, uh, what's his name? Hosea, um, Ahaz. These guys rebelled against kings. So he's speaking about that. Go ahead. So as the uniting of our kingdoms, 
honorably intended by us cannot go forward. So he, he told the Persian king, as long as these guys, this nation exists, our kingdoms, meaning Amon's and the Persian king, Xerxes' kingdoms, cannot come together as one. They cannot remain united. Go ahead. Seeing then, we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. Seeing then that we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. How? We differing in the strange manner of their laws. Because we differ from all people because of our laws. Our laws make us different from anybody else. Okay, because all nations were black at one time, so it's not about complexion. What made us different from anybody else was our peculiar laws and our God that gave them to us. That's what made us different from anybody else. And those laws made us different from anybody else. And what made us go against anybody else because we only had one God. Other nations had many gods. We were monotheistic, one God. They were polytheistic, multi-gods. We had one, all nations had many. And our God gave us rules and morality. They had, the nations had their own free will, do what they want to do. We were very different from other nations. Other nations. We were contrary to all nations. Go ahead. In opposition unto all men, differing in the strange manner of their laws, and evil affected to our state. And because of those laws, these guys are a problem to our state, to our uniting, he's saying. Go ahead. Working all the mischief they can. Slander. That our kingdom may not be firmly established. That our kingdom cannot remain united. We cannot come together. So this, this, this was his, his um, petition to the, to the king of, of Persia, Xerxes, to have us killed off. Now, jump to verse, go to chapter um, 16, verse 10. Let's get some more detail on what his race is. So you read earlier, he was an Agagite, right, of Amalek. 16, verse 10. Watch this. Esther, chapter 16, verse 10. For Amon, a Macedonian. A what? A Macedonian, the son of Amadatha, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood, and far distant from our goodness, and as a stranger received of us. So now he's called, it says... For Amon, a Macedonian. Hmm. Who else in the Bible is referred to as a Macedonian? Get first Maccabees now. That's why the Apocrypha was removed. First Maccabees 1. And I'm going to prove that later to the same people. Later on, if the time allows. First Maccabees 1. Verse 1. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 1 and verse 1. And it happened after that. Alexander, Alexander the Great, the Greek, go ahead. Son of Philip, the Macedonian. Son of Philip, the what? The Macedonian. Son of Philip, the Macedonian. Hmm. So an Edomite is called the what? A Macedonian. Because they're one and the same. So now, let's go to Obadiah 1. Let's just jump into it. Obadiah 1. Obadiah 1. We're going to be verse 1. The book of Obadiah, chapter 1 and verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So, you're reading here a prophecy regarding the fate of Edom. And it says that a rumor, a rumor is heard that an ambassador of a nation will eventually rise up against her in battle. Swing it to Armageddon. Read on, verse 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Go ahead. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Whose habitation is high. This nation, Edom, they would dwell on the cliffs of the rock, and their habitation is high, referring to the mountains, Mount Sierra. Go ahead. And eventually, that, the Caucasus Mountains and all mountains of Europe and Spain and so forth. Go ahead. That sayest in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? So, for them to have pride in his heart, and for them to say, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Over time, Esau will gain power and dominion over the earth to say these things. Go ahead. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. So this nation will live in the mountains, in the caves of the rock, and they would exalt themselves as the eagle. One nation has done this. Britain has done it. Spain has done it. France has done it. Russia has done it. Greece has done it. Rome has done it. Britain has done it. And America, lastly, has done it. 
letting you know who Esau is today. Caucasus Mountains and so forth caves, um, exalt themselves as an eagle, is referring to the so-called white man today. Go ahead. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. So this man will also set his nest or dwelling in the stars. You have something today, if you, if you confuse, oh, the moon landing was a hoax. Okay, now you have the Star Wars program. Now you have the Space Force, which is more definitive. Space Force, where they reside in space. They're not in space. Okay, well, they have satellites up there, right? They have space stations, right? Who has done this? The so-called white man did it. Now, if you say Russia did it first, they exalt themselves as the eagle, too. That was their symbol, too, Russia. It's the same people. It's just sibling rivalry with them. Don't fall, don't fall for the controversy on the news. Russia and America are going to go at it. Uh, that's sibling rivalry. Because when it comes to us, they'll unite and destroy us. So don't fall for their little beef. That's sibling rivalry. I call, I call it sibling rivalry, going back and forth, two, big, two brothers fighting, over, fighting each other over who's, who's powerful, who's stronger. But at the end of the day, both of them hate Negroes and Hispanics, period. So don't fall for that. Same people, different agendas, different ideals. Go ahead. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. So who set themselves on as an eagle? What are they saying they got in the moon? The eagle has landed. If that was a hoax, they're up there now, and they still say the eagle has landed. So they're still up there, and they're still a damn eagle. Live in the caves, eagle's their symbol, run the space. This is too definitive. It's not Arabs. Arabs aren't doing this. Yeah, you know, like, when you read the scriptures like that, when you know that God you serve, if God said these so-called, uh, uh, no, no, I just go like, if God said that either might going to use ego, believe me, people. This God is showing you his power. They have to use the ego. There is no if or maybe. You understand? But since when they're j Japheth, you understand? To show you these brothers, they're unbelievers, man. They reject what God is saying. They went into their own imagination. The reason why they use Japheth is because when you read the Bible, there's not too much judgment regarding Japheth. It's not too much judgment regarding him. Regarding him in the last days, there is none. Not much. So they, they run to him because they love white, they love white folks. They love white folks. White folks can be saved. Romans 11, they use that. Esau can be saved. He ain't the white man, but he can be saved. It's okay. So, whatever. Coons. Uh, coonage. Read verse uh, 4 again. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, Once you've accomplished the these things, you come out of the mountains, you gain power, exalt yourself, exalt yourself as the eagle, and you get into space, then will I bring you down. I'm going to start to bring you down. Go ahead. Then will I bring thee down, say of the Lord. Go ahead. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they have had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, will they not leave some grapes? So the Lord's saying, you guys, you take till the oil is gone. If a thief comes to you and robs you, he'll leave something behind. You guys come along, you take everything. You take the identity. You take the idea, you take the land, you take everything. No one can have anything with you around. Esau takes until nothing is left to take. Go ahead. How are things, how are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? How? Because the Most High reveals it. What, what things hidden? We didn't know in the past that he exalted himself as the eagle. We didn't know that that was Esau referring to Esau. Now we know the Most High revealed to us coming out of the caves of the mountains. And you have to examine this man. You have to examine. The elder brought it out numerous times during the Revelation series that's been out every week about this man having the lying signs and powers of Satan. There's a show that came on, and Captain Zakai brought it out way back, called Strange Angel. And the, and the founder of Rocket Science, same as something Chris Parsons, I believe his name was. Something Parsons. And in the show, he reveals that he was in the occult. And that Satan gave him understanding and technological, intellectual te um, understanding to learn rocket science, to go into space. So in that show, they're telling you, and this man was part of a religion called Thelema. That's like an ancient Aleister Crawley. That's them. That's like the ancient occult. Alchemy. Alchemy. Mm -hmm. It's called Thelema. It's an old uh, satanic religion. And Parsons, that man who's a founder or father of rocket science, 
said that he gained his intellectual ability was opened more in that religion. So Satan gave him understanding to go into space. So it's not far-fetched. If there's a God, there's a devil. Yeah. Dummies. Oh, the moon landing is impossible. Nothing's impossible with God. Nothing's impossible with Satan either because God gives him the orders. So that man, it tells you in that show, strange angel, I mean the devil, the devil, how he learned, how he gained the intellectuality to go into space. Look it up yourself. Rock is a strange angel. Look it up. It was something Parsons. Forgot his first name. But that's the show, the show that you know. That's what it's about. This man has power of Satan to do. Who told him what he would need to go into space? The suit, Jack Parsons. The suits they need. The metal they use to go up there. Who taught him these things? How far they got to go? How to get back? Who taught him these things? How to see atoms? How to split atoms? Who taught him these things? You can't see atoms. How the hell you split them? <laughs> How you going to split something you can't see? Because Satan told them. These are the mathematical equations. E equals MC square. Okay, Einstein? Yes, Dad. Yes, Satan. Write that down, nigga. I mean, demon. Write that down, eat them. <laughs> okay. E equals MC square. And they all look crazy. They always look weird. Even that guy, Oppen what's his name? Oppenheimer. He said, behold, I am become death, destroyer of worlds. Manhattan Project. Who gave him understanding? The devil. Nuclear weapons, the devil. Nuclear fire is witchcraft. Yes, is. Nuclear technology is witchcraft. Yeah. Texting is witchcraft. Yeah. Wi-Fi is witchcraft. Yeah. It's all sorcery. Yeah. You send a message, you got Wi-Fi, you got signal, you can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Bluetooth, no wires on the headphones. Who the hell told, how? 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 Hey, how can I could you you in another side of the world and I could communicate with you and see you? That's witchcraft, man. Yep. <laughs> you understand? Today we watch it as as nothing when growing up. That was no such thing like that. You know, but but it is witchcraft. But I don't want to scare y'all. Oh, don't use the cell phone no more. I'm not trying to scare you. Technology today, science is in the it's, it's witchcraft. It's in the same level. Science, they call it science, technology, it's witchcraft. Technological advances of today, touching the screen, moving things around, even on us uh, in movies, 8K, 12, you can see someone's soul now. You watch your TV, is that his soul? God damn, he's evil as hell, you see it through the TV. 12K, 20K, it's, it's insane. Yeah, 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 think about it. The TV, the TV looks better than real life. Wow. Yeah, man, You're like, about damn, they look crazy. The, the glasses look better, the hair, you see their hair falling, you see the, the hair coming out their face, like, damn. Yeah, man, yeah, man, think about life like that. Then think about the statement Christ made. For you to be, Christ is a God. He's saying that I will not meet you as a man. Mm -hmm. God, Christ already tell you the technology that man going to have before he, before he came here. For you to say, tell a man, I will not meet you as a man. He's already tell you the power he's going to face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? Your guy's sleeping. You know what I mean? Your guy's uh, 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 eating McDonald's and, and, and uh, whatever, some french fries. You understand? Know yeah, this is real thing going on out here, man. This is real life. This is real talk. Right. That's the show right there, Strange Angel. I watched like what maybe a few episodes of it. It's all getting weird. I couldn't do it. When you watch the first maybe two or three episodes before the gayness sets in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it gets there. Uh, that's when it shows. It shows him having a him seeing. He, he has a vision. You see him on the moon, and his father's like, "You built this. You see a rocket on the moon. You see all of that. You see the flag. All it shows all of that on the show. It's crazy." But he starts letting you know how he gained the capability to get into space. And why in the space force? Why is there a space force? Because he's expecting company. That's why it's a space force. He knows what's coming. And the Lord said, "I'm gonna give you all that technology." So all these Negroes can see you ain't nothing to me. Because these guys think you're God. We're going to find out who God is when I show up there. Where you at? I was at verse uh, 6. Verse 7, yeah. How are the things of Esau jump searched the, jump out? Verse 9. The verse 9. Oh, verse 9. Sorry. Yeah. And thy mighty men, O oh, Teman. Teman will be the scientists. Captain Isaac brought this out recently in class as well. Teman will be the scientists. Germans, that's them. Germans, the that's Timon, that's their wise men. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're scientists and so forth. Go ahead. 
O thy mighty men, and thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed. To the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. So their main, their end is to be cut off by slaughter. That is their end. That's why they don't believe in God. They don't believe in the Bible because the Bible tells you that their end is to be eradicated off the earth. What Haman tried to do to us, God says, I'm going to do to them. Read the verse 11. Go ahead. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. And thou shalt be cut off forever. Now that violence goes from the time of Babylonian captivity up until now. From the Greece to Rome to Spain, Spanish Inquisition, to England, to Britain, to France, all the atrocities they committed against us until this very day. They must be cut off and destroyed by slaughter. And cut off forever. I mean, they'll never come back again. Ever. Not a living soul of them left, male or female. That's why Negroes say, oh, Jeff is, he's Jeff is. But they know he's not coming back. Say bye to him. Say bye, say bye, bye. bye Miss Anna. Go ahead, you Miss Laura. Go ahead. And the, and the day that thou stoodest on the other side, and the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was one of them. That was asked one of them, I mean, he was as Babylon, because that's why the Lord refers to him as the daughter of Babylon. Because everything that Babylon did, he didn't follow suit. Whether um, attacking us, in this case physically, then eventually spiritually, ideologically, it's all from behind Babylonian customs and so forth. We celebrate New Year's today, Christmas, it's all Babylon. Same thing. Birthdays, Babylon, same thing. Fake Jesus, a miraculous birth, Babylon, same thing. Everything Babylon pushed from the ancient Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, Esau pushes today because he is the daughter of Babylon. He is the spiritual offspring of Babylon. Let's get 2 Chronicles 36, 11. 2 Chronicles 36, 11. You're going to be but um, it says... um. When they were, that was asked one of them. This is going to um, Edom help Babylon destroy Jerusalem. This is the book of Second Chronicles, chapter thirty-six, verse eleven. Going to be about Babylon coming in. Go ahead. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. This is the king that Haman was referring to in, in terms of the spies in the order of kings. He rebelled against the king of Babylon, so Haman used this guy's screw up as an example of why we can't be trusted. Or our kings can't be trusted, or our leaders can't be trusted. Go ahead. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar. See, who, he rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar. Go ahead. Who had made him swear by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen, mm -hmm. and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and of his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. So the Lord kept sending prophets. We kept killing the prophets over and over again, throwing them in jail, killing them, locking them up. That's what we kept doing there to Jeremiah. Did the same thing to him. Therefore, he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary. This goes back to the elder brought out last week about the Lord said, set a mark upon them, kill the old and young. That's what it's going into right here. Set a mark upon those. All right, same thing. Kill the young and old, men and women, men, women and children. Go ahead. Who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion upon young men, young man or maiden, old man or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand mm -hmm. and all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord. And the treasures of the king and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. 19. 
And they burnt the house of God. They burnt the temple. Go ahead. And break down the wall of Jerusalem. Shred the walls. Go ahead. And burnt all the palaces thereof with fire. And burnt the houses down to the ground. Go ahead. And destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. So that's what Edom did. And, Bab and that's what Babylon did. And Edom came behind and burned down the, the temple. Go to um, and, oh. Obadiah 11. Obadiah verse 11. So Obadiah, so the Lord sent Babylon to go in there and do that. Edom came in there and did more damage. They add on to it. Go ahead. In the, in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his, vo his forces. Our wealth. Go ahead. That's Babylon. Go ahead. And foreigners entered his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even though wast as one of them. Even thou wast as one of them. G Edom. Go ahead. Watch this. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger. He was scattered out of our land. Go ahead. Became strangers out of our land. Go ahead. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity. Nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. They came in and took our stuff. Took our drill was left over. It took, I came and took our stuff. Go ahead. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. So when the Babylon came in, some of us tried to escape. But Edom came in and caught us mm. and brought us back to the Babylonians. Damn. They hated us that much. Go ahead. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. So that's the, the most I said. I'm going to kill you guys off of that. I'm going to destroy you off of that. Because that hatred never, ever left them. It passed on to their progeny, even till now. Go to, um, what do I want? The dictionary real quick. The dictionary. Zonovan Dictionary. Uh, just get one. I don't have that. I didn't send that up. Nobadiah. You know what I want, right? Yeah. Eat them. Uh, page 142, Bible Dictionary. Yep. Eat them. Eat them. Just jump to eat them figures. Yes, sir. Eat them figures prominently. In the prophetic scriptures. So Edom fig figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures, like we read earlier. Obadiah is one of them. Go ahead. Edom figures prominently in prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. As the scene of great future judgments. Read, the, read what it gives us. See, notably, Isaiah chapter 34, verse pro 5 pro and 6. That's prophetic. The whole chapter, go ahead. Isaiah 63, verse 1. The whole chapter, that's prophetic regarding his destruction. Go ahead. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given, given any promise of mercy from God. That nation can't repent. No mercy is given to them. Not an ounce. None. They cannot repent. They cannot be saved. They're doomed. And if you were them, you would do what they do today. You'd lie. you steal. You kill and keep it secret if you knew your nation was doomed forever to be killed off by slaughter. You're going to do all you can in your power to hide any, any identity of yourself yep. from the people of God. You're going to do it. You're going to try to give us as keep as much of Israel and sin as you possibly can if you was in their shoes. Or if they wake up, I'm going to slavery and be killed off. Oh, no, 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 no. Give them more drugs. Here, cocaine, give them more cocaine. More, more. I want them niggas wake up. Get them sleep. I ain't getting killed off by these niggas. I'm going to lift up legs. Excuse me, I can't say nigga no more. Get um, Psalms 37, verse 7. Psalms 137, verse 7. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 137, and verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that reward of thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be 
that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. You say it again? Verse 7 again, I'm sorry, I missed you. Verse yes, sir. Again. Psalms 137, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who what, said. What day is that when Babylon came in? Go ahead. Who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Burn the temple down to the ground so nothing's left. Go ahead. O daughter of Babylon. What's Edom called? O daughter of Babylon. What's Edom called? O daughter of Babylon. Edom is Babylon. Go ahead. Who ought to be destroyed. Based upon what? What Obadiah said earlier. Go ahead. Happy shall it be that reward of thee as thou hast served us. Go ahead. Happy shall it be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. And smash your little ones against the stones. Say something real quick. Let me find something real quick. Say something. Yes. Uh, you know, like D.K. Nathan just make a statement said if he was like Edom, he would have hide his identity as well. Man, th you may think about it. they hide their identity to all nations. You understand? They are all nation, but they cannot. I don't. I ever. I. I don't think I ever heard a white boy say he is Edom. But he's everybody else. You don't think they know they're Edom? They know they're Edom. So that's what they. That's what they do. What they do, because even though uh, people don't realize when you get to technology, you see China didn't have nothing upon Esau technology. Then look at technology alone. You understand? When you examine technology, it's a force. Believe it or not, it's a force. You understand? Against everything that God stands for. You understand? Because guess what? His technology is going to get to a phase where you, uh, uh, yeah, you notice that some, some, some surgery today, they don't have to cut you. They're doing it just like that. Think about the power of it. How do you know that? How do you know what part to go in the body? How do you know what part to do in the body? So it's showing you his technology is going against the force of God. You understand? I mean, but when you're looking at his ways of life, the way he live, he live careless. You understand? Like he is God. He do whatever he want. I mean, like people don't realize that when Donald Trump did what he did to the Iran people, think about it. Back then, there, that's wartime. You understand? But to show you, he show the world like I'm the superpower. I do whatever I want. That's what, that's what uh, uh, the president said. You understand? But then people don't realize that people in the army acknowledge that. I pick up one of the white boy. White boy told me that, listen, everybody have to bow down to us. If they don't bow down to us, we're going to come and kill them. That's what the white boy, he was in the army. That's what he said to me. He said that we are the superpower. But they're not, they're not both that to the TV, they are the superpower. You understand? They woo the whole thing. Either you bow by their woos or you're going to get some judgment. You understand? I mean, but when you're looking at society, uh, uh, where, where Bishop with Revelation, when you're looking at the way he created his system, you your, your spirit eyes have to be open to see Esau. Your spiritual ears have to be open to understand what we're bringing out. You understand? If you're caught up in uh, your kind of mind, you would think that we crazy the, the way we bring these things out. But these things all have to do with spiritual levels. Man, how you grow up. Go ahead, Deacon. Well, I sent you two things. The first one I sent you, about um, personalities, right there. Yep. Uh, Officer Jensen sent me this on the biblical personality. Read that for Esau, the highlight part. Yes, sir. The biblical personality. Esau is a figure. No, no. The the highlight part for oh, Esau, sorry, the final. Sorry. For Esau, the final agony is unfortunately immortalized. The final agony Dang. is unfortunately immortalized. I mean, that cannot be changed. His fate cannot be changed. Go ahead. His, his, his descendants. Come on. His descendants include. Go ahead. Include the greatest enemies of the Jewish people. Who? The evil Amalek. Oh. Uh. Haman. Oh. Uh. Go ahead. And the Roman Empire. Oh, uh. okay. Let's get some more. Get the next one. Thank you, Jess. Next one. Um, what Gad said regarding them. Let's see if Gad disagrees with this. Read the old Indian prophecies. Yes, sir. Old Indian prophecies. The old Indian prophecies say that the white man's stay on these western continents will be the shortest of any who have come here. From an Indian? From an Indian point of view, the general theme by which to understand the history of the hemisphere would be the degree to which the whites have responded to the rhythms of the land. How they treat the land. Go ahead. The degree of which they have become indigenous. From that perspective, 
The judgment of Europeans is severe. The judgment of Europeans is severe for their actions to the people and their actions towards the earth itself. Severe. That's their prophecy. Now, let's go to, where we at? Ezekiel 35, verse 2. Well, our forefathers on um, this side of the world knew they were destroyed severely, and our forefathers knew on the other side of the world they were destroyed severely. Either way, they know. And these son knows it too. That's why he's going out with a bang, pass all these laws, mm-hmm. cutting men's rods off, making them girls, giving women penises. He's just going, he's going all out, man. He's going out with a bang, man. He's wild out. <laughs> wild out. That's all. Wild out. How's he gonna do, man? No moles, no nothing. Yo. Wild out, man. Bucket list. Yep. Whatever. Whatever's whatever. Ezekiel 35, 35 and 1. Verse 2. Verse two. Yeah. Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. See, Mount Seir is Esau's land. Or his people. Jump down to verse. Go to Genesis 36. No, I want that. Go to verse, verse 3. Verse 3, and say unto it, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Verse 5 again. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. That hatred went down from Esau himself when he wanted to kill Jacob. Then it passed, and that, that moment passed. The Lord humbled his, humbled him, calmed him down. But that hatred for Jacob passed into his children, then passed into his, his um, down the line to the Greeks, into the Romans, into them now. It's always been there. Hatred's always been there. Go ahead. And has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Their, their, their time to go into captivity, Babylon. So he's going into. They did. They made it worse. They came behind that and added on to it to Babylon's judgment against them. Read verse. Read down to verse ten. Yes, sir. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith, thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue you thee. You don't like killing? I'm going to have death follow you. You bring death, I'm going to bring death to your doorstep. Go ahead. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men. In thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. Go ahead. I will make thee perpetual desolations and thy city shall not return and ye shall know that i am the lord so they can't return because the inhabitants the nation itself will be eradicated so they can't build cities no more if they ain't here verse 10 because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and we will possess it whereas the lord was there these two nations going into southern kingdom northern kingdom going into jerusalem and samaria Later on, going into Jerusalem and the Americas. Same thing. Go ahead. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. The same anger and hatred you had towards them, I'm use mine against you, because God hates Esau. So the same hate, anger and hatred you had towards my people, I have that same anger and hatred towards you. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to perform my anger towards you like, you, like you performed yours towards them. Go ahead. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. When he uses us to to judge them. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains Ah, of Israel. And I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel. Go ahead. Saying, they are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. They're Negroes now. They're Indians now. They're savages now. They're nothing. We can, we can destroy them now. Take their land from them. Take their identity. And be, we can become Jews now. Hey, they're slaves. We're Jews now. They're slaves. We're Christians now. Their land is not theirs no more. They're in boats. That land's ours now. Blasphemies. 
Last me of the bastards. Go to 2 Chronicles 36 and verse 20. 2 Chronicles 36 and 20. Let's see what they did. When Israel won the captivity in Babylon, what did, they, what did Edom do? 2 Chronicles 36, verse 20. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. See that? So we were carried away to Babylon until Persia came along and gave us our liberty. Get First Ezra's now, 4 and 42 in the Apocrypha. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 42. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 42. We're going to read down to verse 50. This is the book guy, of Esau always had an eye on our land. Always. Always had an eye on our land. First Ezra 4, verse 42. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 42. Then said the king unto him, Ask what thou wilt, excuse me, ask what thou wilt, more than is appointed in the writing, and we will give it thee, because thou art found wisest, and thou shalt sit next to me, and shalt be called my cousin. This is um, the, the king speaking to Zubabel, because there was a contest that was given. Zubabel won that contest, and as a reward, he was offered whatever he wanted, wanted from the king, the king would grant him. Also, second, uh, also, he would be second under the king and be called his cousin. So, Zubabel gained much status. So, let's see what he did with the status. Read on. Then said he unto the king, Remember thy vow, which thou hast vowed to build Jerusalem in the day when thou camest to thy kingdom, mm -hmm. and to send away all the vessels that were taken away out of Jerusalem, which, which Cyrus set apart when he vowed to destroy Babylon. And to send them again thither. This is Zubabel, Zubabel talking to Darius. Go ahead. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple. Which the Babylonians and Edomites destroyed. Go ahead. Which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. Which who burned? Which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. See that? So the Edomites burned the temple. So our forefathers suit, and they knew that. He said, Darius, the Edomites, they burned our temple when the Babylonians came in. Read on to verse 50. And now, O Lord the king, this is that which I require and which I desire of thee. And this is the princely liber liberality proceeding from thyself. I desire, therefore, that thou make good the vow, the performance wherewith with thine own mouth thou hast vowed to the king of heaven. Then Darius the king stood up and kissed them and wrote letters for him unto all the treasures and lieutenants and captains and governors that they should safely convey on their way both him and all those that go up with him to build Jerusalem. Go ahead. He, he gave, wrote letters. He gave Zubabel liberty to return to Jerusalem to rebuild the city. Zubabel gained status. He did not let it go to his head and forget his people. He, went, he got status. He returned with Joshua over and they helped rebuild the temple to his formal to the best of their ability, to his glory it was in, once was in, under Solomon. They rebuilt the temple, all right? Him and Joshua returned to the land to rebuild what Babylon destroyed, and then later on, Nehemiah Ezra came and, and, and um, fixed the walls, later on. Go ahead, watch this. He, he wrote letters also unto the lieutenants that were in Silo, Syria, and Phoenice, and unto them in Libanus, that they should bring cedar wood from Libanus unto Jerusalem and that they should build the city with him. Yeah. Moreover, he wrote for all the Jews that went out of his realm and up into Jewry concerning their freedom, that no officer, no ruler, no lieutenant, no treasurer should forcibly enter into their doors. Verse 50, watch verse 50, here we go. And that all the country which they hold should be free without tribute. No more taxes, watch this. And that the Edomites should give over the villages of the Jews, which, which then they held. What did Edom do? Take our land over. Move into our land. Edom, Israel gets taken out of, land, out of the land by Babylon. Esau moves right in there. So the Persian king said, get out. So we can go back in our land again. So Esau always had a plan to take our land from us. When we got taken into slavery, Edom came in took the land over. This has always been their MO. Always, always, always. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, 
nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.